Hi, and welcome to another episode of Inspiring Business. My name is Mark Bullock, and I'm the co-founder of PhoneBlogger.net, of VideoSocials.net, and our newest service, Video Interview Podcast Services, where we facilitate marketing services and systems for professional service firms, including attorneys, financial professionals, coaches, and consultants. Every episode, I interview business thought leaders who make a difference in the world through their services, their products, or their ideas. You can find the show on YouTube, LinkedIn, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and many others. Today, my guest is Francis Sheffer, who is an education attorney at Sheffer Law PA, and she can be reached through shefferlaw.com. Welcome, Francis. I'm so excited to have you. Thank you, Mark. I'm so excited to be here. Um, it just uh, inspiring business. I mean, it's such a great idea of helping people learn about what's out there. And thank, thank you. And, and I, you know, obviously it comes from a point of, look, we're not just doing this to make a living. We're not just doing this to, because it's our profession. We do whatever it is that we do because of the difference that it make, that it makes for others. Right. So, um, and, and my perception of you, and I've known you for, for some time now, you've been a video socials member with us for, for a number of years and uh, or over a year. And, um, uh, and I've seen you record many, many times and, and the recordings that you do and the, the, authentic, the authenticity of who you are coming across the camera is, uh, uh, is inspiring. And so you're exactly the kind of person that I wanted to have on my show. And I guess that's really kind of the best place to start is, you know, what is your why? What, why did you become and, and, and how did you become an education attorney? So my story is so different than everybody else. Um, I was always interested in special needs children, even as a child myself. Um, you know, I used to babysit, I used to do uh, child education stuff. I then went to school for education and I got my under, undergrad degree in early childhood education. Um, I moved down to Florida and taught there for a few years and realized I wanted the special education degree. So I went and got my master's in special education. I spent seven years in the classroom between regular ed and special ed and then things weren't what I wanted. And so I tried moving to a middle and high school um, became the special education coordinator for two years, but it still just wasn't working. It wasn't what I wanted to do. I didn't feel like I was truly making a difference in children's lives. So I went to law school. Well, yeah, I basically, I went to law school and decided like, this is, this is my why, this is what I want to do. I want to help families get through the daunting process of special education services in the school system and just help families learn how to advocate for their children. Because what I saw as a teacher, schools aren't always as knowledgeable as they uh, could be about the laws. Mm. They do what they think they should be doing on the policies, following policies, but it's not always what the law is. And they're not always forthcoming with parents on what's available to their children. So it's, it sounds like, first of all, thank you. And it sounds like basically you almost backed into it. I mean, you, you knew that you wanted to be in education. You knew, you, you knew that you wanted to, to help kids, um, you know, with their education process that, that led you into, into being kind of the, in the special education, you know, component of it. And then realizing that, Hey, I, you know, there's, there's laws around this. There's, there's, ad, there's advocacy that needs to happen. And so, you know, you went back and got a law degree, you know, to be able to do that. So, I mean, that's, that's impressive. Um, and I see that your tagline is um, stress-free IEP. What does that mean? So stress-free IEP, I came up with this um, several months ago and it was just like, that's, what I want to provide to my families. IEPs are stressful. Being told you have a child with special needs is stressful. It's it, knowing what to do and how to navigate the system. I mean, if you've ever been to an IEP meeting, you walk in as a parent, and I've done this with six people at the other side of the table. Right. And it's you, the parent, and the six people. 
And while it says team and you're supposed to be teaming, it isn't always. And it's just, I want to be able to be that person that comes in with the family so that they can just be a parent and not have to worry about it. They don't have to worry about listening to what everybody's saying or what they say if they're going to mess anything up. I, they can just be a parent, say what they want, and then I can turn it into the language to achieve what they want for their child in the IEP. So you're you're basically the advocate, not only for the child, but for the parents and supporting their children in that, in that process. And um, what do you do to prepare your, your clients for those types of meetings? And uh, do you coach them? Do you, what do you so, do? Yeah, I mean, so I provide all sorts of services. I mean, sometimes my services is just what I call a strategy session. And it's the parent saying, I have a meeting tomorrow. I don't know what to expect. Mm -hmm. And then I can talk through the parent of like, okay, this is an initial meeting. They're gonna talk about evaluations, what evaluations they're gonna request. Here's from what you've told me, I can tell them what I think they should request, what to expect to happen at the meeting or at an IEP meeting, an initial IEP meeting or an evaluation results meeting, like wherever the stage is on the IEP or even a 504 plan, I can talk the parents through what to expect at the meeting, what might get said, what that actually means, because there are definitely times that the schools say things without thinking through, and it could be shocking to the parents to hear that. And right. so you might hear this, this, and this, and this is what it means, and this is how we respond to it. So I help the parents understand and just feel comfortable walking in, whether they choose to bring me or not bring me, just so they feel comfortable walking into the IEP meeting and empowered to advocate for their child. So it sounds like there's there's a lot of potential stages here and there's multiple meetings. There's, there's not just an IEP meeting. There's there's other meetings that, that, that are potential. And as, as I think the operative word there is that, you know, what is the strategy walking into it is perhaps just as important as, you, you know, knowing what you want to get out of it but how do you get what first of all what you want to get and second of all what is available to you because do you find that that people really even understand so what's available and, and what's they don't i mean so it, the, it depends on the school and it depends on the school system and i you know i i work in maryland and dc and all the counties in maryland I taught in Florida in two different counties and everybody does it slightly different. It's federal law though. So there's certain things that have to be followed that schools don't always follow. Um, and so it, it's not that schools are trying to hide something, but they're not always as forthcoming to what is available to the families. And so that's where I can help the families like talk through well, what are the issues you see with your child? What are the struggles at home? Let's bring that into the IEP meeting so that we can get the school to get this stuff on the IEP to help make it easier at home for you. So it's a fluid, you know, it, it how your child's day is in school makes a huge difference in how life is at home. Absolutely. And, and, and as you're talking, I can't help but think from my own personal experience, and I think I had relayed this to you before, we, we have uh, one of our sons had very strong ADHD, and, and that was causing a lot of issues in school with behavior and, and, and misbehavior, et cetera. Um, and we ended up sitting in on an, uh, on an IEP meeting not even knowing what it was, what it was about, et cetera. And the only, and the only thing that we took out of it was, you know, go get your son tested and get, and, and, and get on medication and, and come back. Um, and, and, and even then it, it never even dawned on us that we needed coaching around this, that we needed to be, you know, to, to really be educated, not just in the general terms of how to deal with the ADHD, but, how to interact with and and what our rights were and what and, and what the school was supposed to be doing, right? So, you know, when they said that they were going to do X, Y, and Z, we're like, oh, great, thank God we're going to have some, you know, some help with it. But looking back from it, from where we ended up, that was way too little, way too late. 
and um, and and I would have, as as I think I had mentioned to you in, in an earlier conversation, um, you know, I give my eye teeth to have had a conversation with you before we ever met with the, before we ever met with the school because it, it I, I think it would have made a huge difference and um, and and there's issues that he's still in, still dealing with today because right. we didn't have those foundations in place they, we didn't have the support in place. Because, you know, we, frankly, we, we can, in our own minds, we were even downplaying, you know, how much of an effect it's, it's ADHD. Lots of kids have ADHD, right? You know, so. Um, it's interesting that you said that go get him evaluated and put him on medication because I hear that often. Um, and I even hear schools tell the parents, oh, just, you know, go get a private evaluation and bring it back to us. But the school has to do the evaluation. If you think there's an issue, the school's required to have a meeting, talk through what the issue is, and do an evaluation, an appropriate evaluation, or determine that there's not an evaluation needed, and in that case, you can fight it. Um, I've had several cases where schools have told clients, "Oh, uh, go do your. You don't. We don't need to evaluate. We don't think anything's wrong." And sometimes the clients have had the means to go do private evaluations and then come back. Sometimes they haven't. And so when they come to me, I then go to the school meeting with them and like, no, 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 we need it. We need the evaluations and the school will then do it because there are times just having an attorney next to you. I mean, it's that the three little letters, the Esquire after your name, it's amazing how people act differently. Um, and I'm, I've even coached people they're giving you pushback now. Go t go say to them, well, I was talking to an attorney and she said, and see what happens. Mm. And oftentimes those words alone changes the tune of what the school is doing. Because they, it, most schools don't want an attorney involved because then they think it's adversarial. And, and, it's, and it sounds to me um, as much as anything, and my sense of you is is that you really live in this space and in the fact of getting educated about what the process is supposed to look like and what and, and what the school is supposed to be doing and um as you said it i'm i'm remembering back now i think it was they initiated that evaluation and i think it was you know who they sent us to was you know their selection for for having that done but not but it never even dawned on us that we may agree or disagree with that we may you know get an additional evaluation as an example or we may you know um really the only path forward for us was medication um and it didn't work by the way um and you know multiple rounds and, and changing etc et so um and there was a quote advocate there and it wasn't like i'm not saying that the school wasn't trying to do the right thing i'm saying that we were we were unknowingly ignorant of what needed to be done and what options there were and um uh, and kind of left it up to the school to tell us what was the what was the best path forward and do you find that what do you do when you run into somebody like like us, you know, hopefully before they get into this process? So, I, I mean, I, I like that you said the schools were trying because that's true. I mean, like thinking back to my teacher years and when I was, you know, regular ed teacher, special ed teacher in IEP meetings, I did what we thought was the law, you know, because that's what we were always told. Well, this is how we do things. But then going to law school and actually reading the law was like, oh, hmm that was probably not as legal as it could have been, but the schools were doing what they thought they could have done. Um, I've had several clients that come in at like, we just got this diagnosis. We don't know what to do. We don't know where to go. What does this mean? And I've just sat down with them and gone through the evaluation and, and said, this is what this means. This is what you can ask for. If you have a good evaluation, it usually has recommendations. Mm -hmm. um, but if the school is doing the evaluation, sometimes the recommendations are limited to what they offer, mm -hmm. which is not what they should be limited to. So I'm able to, my education background helps me read through the evaluation and be like, ah, but this incident here, we need to make sure we pull to have an accommodation or a goal 
to reach to to address this issue because this is an issue that needs addressing that the school might not have picked up on right. um or it could be something that's happening at home so i mean I have, I, I know, well, you know, through video socials, I have over 50 videos on my YouTube channel, um, Schefter Law PA, and it, three minute videos on just each little point that you need to know about an IEP meeting so that nice, easy, digestible information for parents to educate themselves. And that's what I want. You know, like I want families to be able to go into an IEP meeting and advocate for their child and not have to bring me. Um, you know, when things go awry and, you know, like, ah, this isn't working anymore. Now we're in a disagreement. Okay. Or, you know, if you think an disagreement is coming up, then definitely you want to consider bringing an attorney or an advocate. Um, but it's, it's that fine line though, because you don't want to wait until it becomes adversarial because then it's usually harder. And as attorneys usually say, it's cheaper to bring an attorney in on the front end, then pay double to fix errors on the back end. I think that's just absolutely critical, Francis, because, it, you know, and I haven't even really considered that before even having this conversation, right? So we, we would have never thought to bring in an attorney until things were going wrong until things, you know, what the, the plan that was created wasn't working and there was still behavioral issues, et cetera. Um, and at that point, frankly, we couldn't have afforded to, to, you know, but getting some coaching, getting some information, getting some, you, you know, leading to having a strategy would have made, I, I have no doubt, a huge difference. And we can't be alone in that, right? And and and, and, and one of the things that you just said that I, I, I really... I think is inspirational is, you know, you're not here because you want to go in and, and have to advocate for, you know, a dispute, right? You're trying to set them up and educate them and, 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 and have them prepared to know what to expect, know what, the, know what should happen and, and know that you've got, that, that they've got an attorney that is ready to step in if needed just to help keep things on, you know, on the rails before there's any possibility of even needing you to quote, be in a meeting with them, you know, to, to now try to untangle or fix the pro fix the problem. So right. it's, in other words, it's preventing the problem rather, rather than. Right. And then what it. also happens is it delays the child getting appropriate services. Absolutely. Because now we need to have meetings again. Um, and it's interesting that you say they couldn't afford it. Um, so what are the things I, recently did is I hired an advocate so that my process is, you know, bringing in a new client, talking through, are you at a point that you just need somebody at the meeting with you or do you need an attorney? Mm. And I get the question all the time, the difference between an advocate and an attorney. And okay. basically it's the legal training for the attorney, but advocates have the education training. Mm. I have both, which is rare to have both. Um, but I just thought it was nice to bring in an advocate so that if it's a case of like, oh, it's an annual review meeting, we're not anticipating anything, you can bring my advocate with you to the meeting, knowing that at any point in time, she knows that fine line of like, uh, the attorney needs to step in. And I'm right there. You're already connected with me. You don't have to go find an attorney and delay the process even longer. I can just step in as needed. So there's, it seems like as far as your engagement with a client could have multiple different kind of threads. So there, it's not just a, you know, hire me and spend X number of dollars to retain me to represent you, et cetera, right? This sounds a lot more nuanced in the fact of what do they need? What, you know, do they need advocacy? Do they need coaching? Do they need education? Do they need representation? Right. And it exactly. sounds like you're kind of, available for all of all of that but not necessarily all of it together it, it, it there may be certain components of that is would that be accurate a hundred percent and that and that's what i do like we so my my intake process i have you know my assistant gets all the basic information if you know like that's it i need to talk to the attorney they can book a strategy session with me immediately um 
or if they're not sure, they can book an, a case and a free case analysis with my with the advocate to talk through the basics to see if this is something we can help with. Um, at my strategy session, the whole point of the strategy session is for me to find out enough information to say, okay, this is where you are. These are options. You could, you know, you could go to the IEP meeting. I could help, you know, I could help review the IEP meeting the IEP for you, and then you could go by yourself, or I could go with you. And I talk through what makes the most sense. You know, sometimes families are like, well, I don't want to be adversarial and start off with bringing an attorney. Okay, so I can work in the background if you want, or mm. go to prep you for the meeting and review the IEP, and then, you know, write all my notes down, and you can take it in. And so you have the notes, and you just basically Put out there what i would put out there mm -hmm. um but we talk through you know is it a case that we're ready to go to mediation like we're not even going to mess with the school anymore we've given them to you know enough choices enough times to try and fix things and mm -hmm. they're still not doing what they need to do so let's file and go to mediation um it's just that's what the whole strategy session is it's kind of different like right. for consultations it's not really a consultation it's a strategy session come in talk through what's going on and what needs to be done to get your child where you want your child to be. Got it. Got it. I'm, I'm, it's, it's just, I, again, <laughs> thank you for being the resource that you are for, uh, for your clients. And as someone who had literally has experience in, in the arena, um, nowhere near as severe or as, 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 uh, uh, as challenging as many parents do uh, with something, you know, there's, there's lots of things out there that are a lot heavier uh, and, a, and a lot more difficult to deal with than ADHD as an example, but just, and that it's more than a toe in the water, but it, but there's, there's people that really have uh, it's really strong, strong things to deal with and, 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 and issues that are very, very hard for the, for the family and, um, and, it's, but it's, I think it's important for me, at least, to understand that whatever it is, have that level of advocacy, have somebody to, to and, and I love the fact that you start with the strategies. It's like, you know, let's not tell, let's not tell you what you need. Let's find out what you need. Right. Right. So. Um, it's interesting that you say ADHD is not as severe because on the spectrum of needs, ADHD mm. is probably in the middle. Mm. Your most severe children that have like that are um, nonverbal and all of that, mm -hmm. usually educational planning is easy for them because mm. they're special ed schools. There's a special ed program. Almost all counties have it. Um, your other children that are higher function, you know, are intellectually up there. That's also that are just need a little tweaking to the to the um to their instruction those mm -hmm. are pretty easy also because they're in your general ed classrooms with whatever little supports the adh children adhd children are and the kids that are in the middle that have the intellect for the general education curriculum but mm -hmm. can't handle being in that large class size that's a spot that is oftentimes missed by the public school because the next step they usually go to is like resource room or right. a special ed classroom. And a lot of times the special ed classroom slows down the curriculum. Right. Which is worse for an ADHD child because they're so <laughs> bright, <laughs> they're now bored. When I was a teacher, I always said, you know, when a child misbehaves, there's two reasons. One, they're so far behind they have no clue what's going on. Mm -hmm. Or two, they're so bright, they're bored out of their minds. And finding that right path is so difficult sometimes. And you have to know what to look for, what to ask for, and how to set it up to get to where you want to be. Thank you, because that's that, that you, you just nailed it on the head. And in, in our in our particular circumstance, um, you know, we're, we're talking, you know, near genius, you know, tested out at near genius. And um, they needed to accelerate, like really accelerate 
to be able to keep up with him, not to not to slow him down because he got bored instantly with you know, and and still is you know as an adult is is still you know uh, trying to work through that cha- trying to work through that challenge. But um, and and so it's it's not just yes as a parent of course we need to understand what it is that's going on with our kids. And we need to understand what we need to be doing at home. But we also need to understand what the school can and should be doing. And in the and thank you for identifying that ADHD is not on the lighter end of the spectrum. It's actually one of the more challenging things to deal with because it's kind of a leg in both camps. They have the intellect. And um, because of that, they can't be in a it's not going to work to put them into a slower moving special education kind of kind of environment they need to be in a faster paced almost like um i want to say spe- not it's not special needs but like you know accelerated accelerated kind of program right it is special needs gifted gifted and talented yes. is technically a special needs Got it. and yes. now like now which unfortunately it's not going to help your son now but now they're starting to recognize the two e kids that they call them mm-hmm. the twice exceptional which are your genius kids with adhd or with um asd autism spectrum disorder um right. and now like montgomery county is great at the programming they're starting to have programs for those children to make a space for them. Awesome. Awesome. So guys, if you're in Maryland (laughs) and you've got, you've got a child with ADHD or is high, you know, uh, high level genius level, um, or is, has special needs. I think you owe it to yourself to connect with Francis at the very least to, to see what she has put online for you. And where can they where can they find that information? How do, how do they get in touch with you? And or how do they just get more education? Because I know you put a lot of free resources out there. Where are they? So my resources are on my YouTube channel, Chef de La PA. Um, okay. And they also, I mean, they're on Facebook. Again, Chef de La PA, that's my handle for everything. Instagram, um, LinkedIn, they're all. My my website, chefdelaw.com. Um, there you can sign up for my newsletter that you can get like I'll, i blog i try to blog weekly i'm not as good as i should be but i'm getting there um but i blog about things you know and it's usually current events like obviously the last two years it was a lot about covid and what the school should have been doing and weren't doing um mm-hmm. and you know just blog about current events and a lot of times i tell people like if you have a topic that you think I should do a video on or something, please send me an email or, you know, comment below or whatever, Mm -hmm. because I'm always happy to share the information that I have to, um, to educate families. And, you know, as a witness to your generosity, because I've seen you record, you know, many of many of those videos that you're talking about, you know, that you're using as video blogs, um, you know, you got from the beginning, what we preach is, you know, make it, educational, make it informational, make it valuable. Um, it's not about promoting. It's it's about educating and, and making a difference through the content that you're creating. And and you're as good as anybody that, that, that I've seen that does that. And, uh, and I do encourage people to check you out on your website, on your YouTube channel, on whatever uh, Facebook, Instagram, you know, what, whatever other places that, you know, is your preferred channel. Uh, uh, Francis's content is fantastic. I did want to take a moment to to talk about what this show is about and 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 how people can get involved with this show. Um, so you can subscribe to it anywhere that you that you listen to podcasts, so that you watch watch podcasts. And it is inspiring business. And what it's about is those people like Francis that are. Uh, inspired to and have a purpose to make a difference, to do something that's beyond just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trained in this, so this is what I do, or I need to make a living, so this is what I do. Well, there's many, many people in the world who have started a business, opened a practice, et cetera, that are doing it because of the difference that it makes for those that they serve 
and or the greater world around them. And so that's what this is about. Again, videosocials.net is one of our primary services where we help people figure out how to be on camera, how to create short-term content. In addition to that, we have our VIP service, which stands for Video Interview Podcast Services, which is this is a video interview podcast, and it's going to be um, set up for audio for all the different audio channels as well. Uh, and if you're interested in doing that or you're doing that already and you see all the logistics and the work and the, and the process, et cetera, that's involved with that and you'd like some help with that, well, that's what those services are for. And that's videosocials.net forward slash vip service and again there'll be links for all of francis's information and for the show information associated with this podcast francis it's been fantastic to have you i was so excited that you accepted my invitation to to, to be a guest and is there anything that you'd like to in parting say um or that that i haven't thought to ask you or or um so it, thank you mark like i was honored that you asked me and you know i i just realized i forgot to mention one other service that i provide which um oh, absolutely. I'm just starting to provide subscription service yes 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 and that's so what right. that means is you basically have me in your back pocket you sign up for a year for a monthly, um, there's different levels, but you get unlimited access, quick questions. You're like, hey, the school said they can't do X, Y, Z. Is that true? And I shoot back an answer to you. Mm. Um, so that's like the basic level. Um, if it needs to be more in depth, like a strategy session, when you're on my subscription service, you get 10% off my rates and my mm. uh, advocates rates. And then you mm -hmm. also get free access to all of my podcasts and webinars. If I ever start charging for them as a subscription member, you'll always have free access. Fantastic. So, so added bonus to help families to, to have that stress-free experience, to know I have somebody I can ask if I'm not sure. Absolutely. And and I think that if nothing else, at least if they've got a few questions, they, you know, maybe, maybe they have a strategy session. Maybe, maybe, maybe they're not even ready yet for a strategy session, but you know, they, they can see there's a, I don't want to say there's a storm brewing, but they, they've got something going on that they just have questions. They just need to know where to find the resources. It sounds like then they can shoot you off an email and you're going to respond you know, so that they don't have to be under a, you know, a full blown retainer agreement to, you know, to, to, to engage with you. So I think that that's brilliant. And how do they get information about that? Um, they can call my office, um, okay. 301-605-7303. Um, okay. And my assistant can help them get signed up. Terrific. Terrific. Well, listen, Francis, thank you again. Um, I, I appreciate who you are for the community that you serve. Um, and, and I just appreciate the fact that you're willing to, you know, kind of think outside the box a little bit. This isn't, this isn't the, what I would coin as the typical attorney client kind of, you know, I'm an attorney that does X, Y, and Z, and I represent you and we, we do a retainer, et cetera, et cetera. You're actually out there as an advocate, as, as an, as an educator uh, and for, for the parents, et cetera. And, um, and I'm just, uh, I'm thrilled that you're here. I'm thrilled at what you do. And please, uh, if, you're, if you're watching or listening to this, take a look at what Frances has to offer for free online because it, she is the kind of person that is making a difference just in who she is in the world. Thank you, Frances. Thank you, Mark. Take care.